as you can see here we will be discussing staircases okay so now we need to know the terminologies that are involved in staircases we need to know um the the, the definitions of the parts of the staircases and ultimately we need to know how to design for reinforcing for staircases. Well, the reason we're doing this chapter is because in your exam, you might be asked to, or test, you might be asked to reinforce, uh, particularly reinforce concrete um, staircases. You're able to do that. You should be able to do that. Some parts they might ask you to draw actually a, a staircase. Um, so you need to know based on the details that are given how to do that. So we'll be discussing all of that. And by the end of this lesson today, you should be able to do any of that comfortably. Well, let's start with uh, the basics. What is a staircase? Well, I don't need to explain what a staircase is to you because you already know a staircase. Um, you've seen a, a staircase, or probably you encounter stairs on a daily basis wherever you're staying, but I'm pretty sure by now all of you know what stairs are. Well, if you don't know what stairs are, here's a picture here showing um, stairs. OK, so another picture of stairs to protect people from injury um, and to facilitate access to movement from one level to another in a building. That's just further explaining why we need stairs. Um, OK, location of stairs. Well, this one we need to go through just a little bit to know background about stairs and where to locate them because you don't just put them anywhere. It should be so located as to provide easy access to the occupants of the building. So number one, it should be easy to access the staircase. Um, people shouldn't struggle to access the staircase. They should just see the staircase and be able to, you know, go on the staircases. So accessibility is very important. It should be so that, excuse me, so located that it is well lighted and ventilated directly from the exterior. One of the reasons is very important to have staircases very visible, well lighted is so that um, people don't get injured because it can be a hazard. Stairs can be hazardous. People can fall, break uh, their legs or their necks even. People can die from staircases. It has happened solely because they are not visible. You know, you, you make one misstep and that's it. A person dies, a person you know, gets injured. So you need to make sure that staircases are very well lighted. OK, it should be located as to have approaches convenient and spacious. OK, it should be big enough. Stairs should be big enough um, to carry multiple people. Uh, that's a given. It shouldn't be that a staircase should, should be one person at a time. No, that's a wrong design. A good design is to make sure that the staircase can handle a lot of people. All right, so let's just uh, move on from there. So now I, I want us to get into the terminologies of the staircase. So a staircase is um, it's just a series of, you know, goings and rises. It goes and it rises and it goes and it rises. And, you know, the going and the rising, it has special names. OK, so if we look at here, OK, the rising one is called a riser. OK, and then the going one, it's called a tread. Or I don't know how to pronounce the word. Sometimes I call it thread, but it's really a tread. So 
uh, the, the going is called a tread, while the riser is just called a rise, a riser. That's it. And then so you've got, so now uh, stairs is just a series of risers and treads. So when they tell you in exam that draws staircases with a series of four risers and four treads, you already know what they mean when they say that can do these four. One, 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 two, two, three, three, four, four, just like that. Okay, and then we've got um, a couple of, um, you know, definitions to go through. Now, these are things that are connected with stairs as well, because a staircase doesn't just have um, a riser and a tread. There's more to it. Uh, yeah. More things can be put on stairs, such as the baluster. And the baluster is a vertical member. Okay, so as you can see, these are balusters. Uh, as you can see them on this drawing here, these vertical members. And then the handrails, as you can imagine, that's where you put your hands on because it has the word hand in it. Uh, the newer post, as you can see, is the vertical member which is placed at the end of flights. Okay, so this is an end of a flight or the beginning of a flight. So that first member is called a new post. So now when a question says, put balusters on the treads, Two balusters on a tread, you already know what they mean. It means you must draw two of these vertical members. And when they say an, an handrail, you, you already know a handrail goes on top of the balusters. And when they say include a newer post, you already know the newer post goes in the beginning or the end of a flight. Okay, and then the soffit, it is the underside of a stair as you can see there soffit okay it's that and the waist as you can see there it's the thickness of the slab uh in case of a, a, a reinforced concrete slab okay so the thickness as you can see there and the thickness you take it from the corner okay where the riser and the tread meet so you measure it from there. OK. Uh, and then there's some cosmetic, you know, cosmetic things such as uh, just to make your stairs a little more comfortable um, and aesthetic, make them have nosing and scotia. As you can see there, scotia is a molding uh, provided under the nosing to improve the elevation of the stair. Just little things you can put um, in a state as demonstrated there. Okay, um, a step is a portion of the stair which permits uh, ascent and descent. Well, you already know step is, it's just, you know, it's the stairs themselves. Tread, we've discussed a rise and a going, we've discussed that. You already know a rise is uh, vertical and the going also um is, is is horizontal as well as the tread the tread and the going is basically the same thing um they use the words interchangeably in drawing okay and a flight a flight of stairs is just a series of steps landing is the uh, um, pay attention to this one the landing it is the level platform at the top uh, the bottom of a flight. So at the bottom you have a landing and at the top you also have a landing. Okay. And then the run it is the total length of stairs in a horizontal plane including the landing. So remember landing and run are often interchangeable as well um, as they mean virtually the same thing. OK, so here's a it's just a bit of more things connected to stairs. 
It's got a headroom. It is the minimum clear vertical distance between a tread and a ceiling. Well, this one, um, you will hardly ever draw this one, but just in case they give it to you, just remember it's the distance between uh, the, the stairs and the ceiling. Okay, remember the the tread is, is a, a horizontal platform, so the vertical uh, distance, that's what we call a headroom. Pitch and slope, that, that, that's just the angle uh, um, of the stairs. Riser, you already know, leading noses, we've spoken about this. Windows, these are the tapering steps which are provided for changing the direction of a stair. Okay, so this one as well, you know, changing direction of stairs. Uh, it's a pity there's no uh, um, there's no demonstration here, but you know, it, these are tapering steps, you know, which are provided for changing direction of a stair. So if you're changing direction, say, just imagine with me. You were walking forward and now you want to turn left. So those stairs and that transition between forward and left, being fully left, um, that is what we consider windows. But you hardly ever draw these things. Don't worry about them. OK, and then we got strings or stringers. These are the sloping wooden members which support the steps instead they run along the slope of the stair okay these are two types of string a cut or open string and then you also have a closed or house string let me just read further in the cut or open string the upper edge is cut away to receive the ends of you know what um this would be better demonstrated uh, but it, it's just um, more information that you might not even need at this point. We've spoken about this walking line, you know, um, the approximate line of movement of people on a stair during ascending or descending is known as a walking line, and it is situated at a distance of 450 millimeters from the center. These are just, um, you know, standards th that are put there, but you don't really need to know them because you are not really designing a set of stairs. You are just going to be drawing. So you need to know the overall just understanding of, of steps. OK. OK, so here's a bit more demonstration from a practical picture where you can see all the details you can see a blaster baluster you can see a handrail you can see the risers a newer there it is a tread you know um and all of that information okay so this is just a classification of stairs um the types of stairs that we have we have a straight stair open neural stair, circular stair, dog leg stair, geometrical stair, bifurcated um, stair. Well, let me just go through some of them. Straight stairs you can see here as uh, demonstrated. Most stairs that you've probably seen are straight, okay? Uh, this is just an example of a straight stair straight stair more straight stair um straight stair there we go okay open newer stair okay so this open newer one as you can see it's going up and then it's got a landing platform and it continues up going a different direction so you go one direction you're going towards your right and then you change direction and then you climb towards your left. So this is called a open neural stair. Okay, as you can see, there's an opening in the middle there between them to change direction. 
Here we go. Here's a practical example. You've seen these ones. It's straight, it's open, and then you go a different direction. And then you've got circular stairs. As you can tell from the name of them, the circular meaning circle, uh, they are circular as it demonstrated here. Uh, they make a circular shape, especially when you look at a top view. Okay, and then dog leg stairs. Um, so it consists of two flights of stairs, an abrupt turn, OK, so there's no space between the turn. It's just abrupt. It's not open, as you can see here from the top view as well. OK, similar to an open neural, but there's no opening between them. It's an abrupt turn, so it's just there. Geometrical stair, now this is a, a funky shaped uh, stair because you can really shape your stairs in any manner that you want. As you can see from these pictures, um, they are a funky looking shape. Look at this one here on the far right. Yeah, this one, funky looking shape. So we call them geometrical stairs. OK, as you can see here, uh, this practical example is strangely shaped. And then you got the perforated uh, stair. Uh, as you can see, the idea is that it is shaped like a T. OK, you can just climb up and then at the top, you can either go right or go left, depending on which direction you want to go. But they are shaped like a T. That's the main thing. Mm, here's an example here. Uh, you climb up and then you can either go right or left, meaning it's shaped like a T. OK, classification of stair material, you can use wooden stairs, you can use wood, you can use stone, metal, reinforced concrete or escalators um, for stairs. OK, um, let's just go through the different material to use. Uh, stair consideration you can use um, um like i said wood the advantages of using wood is that it's cheap it's easy to construct and it's lightweight okay uh, as you can see here is an example of wooden stairs uh, you can use stone as you can see stone this these are stone this is not concrete these are just carved stone it was polished nicely uh, as you can see, but the one that we are really interested on here is the reinforced concrete stairs because those ones are the ones that you might get in your test or exam where you have to reinforce it. Don't worry, you won't be designing the reinforcing. You'll just be told that it has certain reinforcing. You just have to put it and know where to put it. Put it. OK, commonly used in all types of construction. Um, these are just some benefits for reinforced um, concrete stairs. Uh, they are very good fire resistant, uh, easily molded, uh, easily maintained. OK, so these are just, uh, you know, some benefits of you know, reinforced concrete stairs. Now, here we go. Here's the detail I was talking about here. You need to know th that where do the bars go? How do you actually uh, reinforce this thing? OK, let's just go back there. What I want to do actually is to zoom in right there. Cool. So what you see here is that you can literally see the reinforcing. So first of all, you put your reinforcing diagonal to the stairs and it goes at the bottom. Do you see that? Well, those are your main bars. And then on top of them, you also put these ones, the, the, under, and the other reinforcing that's going into um, the screen or out of the screens, but they are perpendicular to each other with 
the main bars at the bottom. So these dots, these big dots are actually bars. These are six diameter bars. The main ones are 12 diameter bars. Okay. And then you see what happens here when you get to, you know, the landing really. So you do, you still do have, um, you know, these bars is, I guess these are the six meter ones, but the whole idea is that you reinforce it at the bottom and the top. Okay, and then you can put uh, this wrapping bar around it, as you can see demonstrated here. And then when you get to the landing as well, you, you uh, reinforce it at the bottom. Now, why do we reinforce at the bottom? The reason we reinforce at the bottom is because that's where the real failure is. That's where the stairs are most likely to fail. And that's where we have tension and we re always reinforce for tension. OK, so uh, compression is very minimum. You don't need to reinforce it at this stage. But if the question tells you that on the landing or on the stairs, please also uh, reinforce for compression, then put put that um, put that put that reinforcing. Otherwise, you you it's it's not common practice to do so. Well, what I really wanted you to see here is how we reinforce or where the reinforcing uh, gets to be. Now, in your um, exam or your test, you will be given this information. You'll be told you have six meter bars and then you have two millimeter bars. Reinforce these stairs. And they will tell you there's going to be so many risers and so many treads. So you have to try it like this exactly. And then you'll be told there's going to be a landing. You know, a landing platform that's going to be this long. You'll be told, uh, uh, you know, how thick your waist should be. You'll be told the angle of the stairs as well. Uh, you'll be given the angle the stairs should go. And then it will be up to you then to draw this um, flight of stairs. Normally, they don't ask you to draw the balusters and, you know, the new walls and the, you know, the, the handrails. But in an event that they do, uh, you already know what they are. So you can draw these things very easily. OK, well. I think that's it from my side. Um, that's all from my side for this topic.